Okay, so now I have my center block, and then I need to pick two more pieces that are going to be the first ray, the first round around the center. So um, I've chosen my three pieces, and they are going to be both of them are going to be lights. Um, so I will be sewing first the center block to another piece. It doesn't have to be square or equal to the center block. That's just what I have picked right now. So I'm just going to sew those on. Then when I'm done, I'm going to open this up. You can press it if you'd like. If you're a real pressing machine person, then just go right ahead. But I'm just going to finger press for the demonstration uh, for now, and then I'll press it at the very end. So I'm going to separate my other strip, and I am going to line these up. So just make sure your edges are together. Um, even if you cut at an angle, so you have an angle, just make sure your lines on the side line up. As you can see, I pushed the seam to the dark. So that does help when you're pressing later, it automatically goes out. And then from here, I kind of just press to the out, outside. So I'm gonna finger press that as well. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and cut this piece um, just following that straight line of the side right up. These are improv blocks, so don't expect per perfection out of your cuts. Just go for it and have some fun. Now that I have my two lights, the next two I'm going to choose are from my dark pile or my medium pile. I have this piece, but it is too small, so I'm gonna choose some different ones. So I've got this one and this one. So what I want to do is make sure that the last piece I added on is going to be connected to the next piece that I am sewing on. So I've got one seam right here. So I'm going to lay these right sides together, line up the side edges as best I can, and then I'm going to sew this together. Okay, I'm going to push it to the outside and do a little finger press. I also have this wood, a wood um, presser, which I really love, and this is perfect for it. So I'm going to finger press that out, and then I'm going to, I, you can use your ruler on this um, and a rotary cutter, or you can just eyeball it and kind of cut it straight up. There we go. I'm going to put this one back in the pile so I can use that later. So I just sewed this piece on, so I need to sew the next piece right here. And it is going to be a dark side as well. Uh, let's see, so I like that. I like how that looks. So I'm going to line my dark right up to the side edges of my previous piece and sew this one down. Making sure that my seams are going the direction I want them to. Um, this one got caught a little bit, but for the most part, you know, I kind of am I'm guiding where those seams are going. I'm going to press this with my wood presser. And if I want, I can trim this one off right here on this edge. You know, again, if you want to just overlap your fabric to it, you can go right ahead. So now I'm back to the beginning again, and I need another light piece right here. So I think I'm going to add this white. I like that. And then, um, actually, I'm going to use this green because it fits just perfectly right here. And then I'm not going to use the white because I don't, let's see, maybe I will use the white because I don't want to go back to a green. I am going to use the white as straight across the top. Okay. So now that I know what I'm doing, I'm going to line up my edge with my previous piece here. So I'm going to line that up and stitch that down. Make sure that, you know, my seams are going the direction I want them to go. All right. Press this down. And now I'm going to go on this side with my white. 
So as you can see, this fabric has a little bit of pinking shears because it was a pre-cut, so just make your sure your seam allowance is going to be um, correct so you're catching all that fabric and don't have an open seam. Got a big thread. All right. <clears throat> Okay, so now I'm going to press that really quickly. Now I've got my two lights done and I'm moving back to the medium size. So, do I really like this one? So I need two more colors. I'm gonna go with this one then I'll add another one. Again, make any adjustments you need for the seams. Then make any, trim off any sides that you need. That wasn't very good, but it'll work. Then I've got this really kind of wide piece, so I'm gonna go with this. Oh, it's looking real great. So now I am back to the two lights and I just continue this process until the size of quilt block is um, what I'm looking for. So I think I'm going to add the yellow there and maybe I'll return with the green on the other side. That looks pretty fun. So this is just about exploring different fabrics, exploring you know, different sizes of widths. You're not looking for perfection at all in here. You're just going for it. The log cabin is a pretty simple block because you're just moving from the center out. So, no matter what your piece is, it lines up fairly well. Let me get my green out here. What else is nice about this block is that because because the sizes or the widths of these strips are all a variety, you are able to square this block up without um, without thinking it's it's the wrong size of strip it's because I have some strips that are one and a half inch in here. I've got a two and a half. I've got a, um, I think a three inch somewhere. I'm not sure if that one's two and a half or three. But anyways, you have different widths of fabric. So when you square this up to whatever size you're looking for or needing, you're able to cut the ends off or the edges if you need without the block looking um, irregular or incorrect it will all look just how just how you kind of planned it to look so that is how you make the log cabin